I may share with you the Gettysburg Address and ask you if it doesn't apply to today. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now, now we are engaged in a great war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield. In the hotel that I'm staying at, I found out the, is the hotel where Dr. Martin Luther King finished his speech. But it's also a place where someone else wrote something. The Battle Hymn of the Republic, written here in a hotel just down the street, because you could see over the buildings at that time, they weren't so high, and you could see, and they watched the battle. That's where the Battle Hymn of the Republic, here, was written. This is a great battlefield filled with warriors on each side. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that this nation might live. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men and women, living and dead who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never be forgotten what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work that they have thus so far nobly advanced. It is rather for us here to be dedicated now to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause which they gave their last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall have not died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. America is at a crossroads, and we must decide, are those words that Abraham Lincoln spoke, and they have no relevance or meaning on us today? America is at a crossroads, and today we must decide, who are we? What is it we believe? We must advance or perish. I choose advance. After the Gettysburg Address, go in and read. I invite you today, go in and read the second inaugural. Abraham Lincoln found God in the stars of Gettysburg. He was baptized and gave the second inaugural. He looked to God and set men free. America... America awakens again. It's the same story throughout history, all of mankind's history. Man finds himself in slavery. And then someone appears to wake America up. It was George Whitfield in the 1740s, an imperfect man, a man who actually at the same time was preaching individual rights, brought more slavery to this land. 
But it was his words that inspired an American generation. They were children at the time, and they grew into be John Adams, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. It happens the same way. It has since the burning bush. Moses. Freedom. And then they forget. They wander until they remember that God is the answer. He always has been. And then they begin to trust. Do you know what kind of trust there must have been if you were in bondage in ancient Egypt and you were crying out to the Almighty, send us, send us someone to free us. And a man shows up with a stick. Don't you think they said, you got to be kidding me. The all-powerful, the almighty, and he sends a man slow of speech with a stick. But look what that stick and that man did. Have trust in the Lord and recognize that Moses and Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, they were men. They were just like you. They just picked up their stick. I think I can relate to Martin Luther King out of all of these giants. I can relate to Martin Luther King probably the most because we haven't carved him in marble yet. He's still a man. And that's the message, that man makes a difference. What is it that these men have that you don't? What is it? Abraham Lincoln, the American Indian, Frederick Douglass, the moonshot, the pioneers. What is it they have that you don't have? The answer is nothing. They are exactly like you. They just did the hard thing. They just decided not to see themselves in any other way other than, oh crap, I got to cross the mountains? Ask yourself, would you have crossed the mountains? I think I would have been stuck at the first river. And if I would have made it all the way to the Rockies, my family would have been right there in Denver, Colorado. Because I would have gotten there and went, oh, you got to be kidding me. They went on. They relied on God and God's grace. America is great because America is good. But that's not the entire story. She's not just good because she's good. America is only what we choose her to be. We, as individuals, must be good so America can be great. America is at a crossroads. And there is a clear and simple choice. Do we choose to just look at the scars? Do we choose to look back or do we do what every great generation has done in America in times of trouble? Look ahead, dream about what we're going to become, not worried about what we are. Look forward, look west, look to the heavens, look to God and make your choice. One of, one of my, one of the phrases that comes to mind a lot is that which you gaze upon, you shall become. What is it we're gazing upon? What is it we look at? Why have we missed gazing upon the reflecting pool. What 
are you gazing on every day? Because that is what you will become. Are we so jaded as a nation? Are we so pessimistic that we no longer believe in the individual and the power of the individual? Do we no longer believe in dreams and the power of one person making a difference? I testify to you here and now, one man can change the world. And I share with you an equal testimony. That man or woman is you. You make the difference. Do not stand and look to someone else. Look to yourself. Pick up your stick and stand. many Americans are looking to someone else. We must be the people that look inside ourselves first and then are a life raft to those around us that need help and not give them fish, but teach them how to fish. We are, we are a nation, we are a nation, quite honestly, that is about in as good a shape as I am, and that ain't very good. I was running around here this week on these steps trying to line up everything. I'd get up to the top and I'm like, okay, i got to sit down for a second. 